The Indians faced a dilemma on the mound in game seven. Start their struggling ace or a young rookie with a perfect 3-0 postseason record. Charlie Nagy was supposed to start game seven. Charlie was struggling a bit in the playoffs. The Indians had called up this pitcher named Jarrett Wright at midseason. Jarrett got hot when the game went the most. So much for the nerves for Jarrett Wright. He is absolutely thriving in this atmosphere. So it's like Indians are going into game seven. Mike Hargrove is tormented. Charles Nagy may be one of my all-time favorite people. I have a huge soft spot for Charlie. If I made the decision with my heart, I would have started Charlie. But Jarrett Wright had pitched really well for us, so I felt it was a better fit for Jarrett to start it. I uh, wasn't happy about it, but you know, it was the best decision for the team. And the 21-year-old right-hander, Jarrett Wright, the rookie, gets the call. They told me, hey, you're starting game seven. And honestly, I, I didn't get nervous. It was like, cool, let's do this. Breaking ball, got him. First strikeout for Wright. We wanted him on the mound. You know, I mean, he was a guy, you know, had electric stuff. Struck him out with the high fastball. He went out and threw the ball great. Got a couple of runs early. And Fernandez with a liner and a setter for a base hit. Tommy scores. Grissom is right behind him. It's 2-0 Cleveland. He gives up the one late. Bonilla sends one out of here. And it's a 2-1 game in the seventh inning of game seven. Now you, you know it's getting late, and the tension is palpable because you realize you're nine outs away, eight outs away. You have the lead. It's a one-run game as we go to the bottom of the line. So in the ninth, I went up into the clubhouse. And when I went up into the clubhouse, they were building the stage, and they were putting the plastic over the lockers. And I remember thinking, not yet. Not yet. I decided to go to the bathroom, and I saw a bunch of champagne moving from one side to another, you know, uh, trying to prepare for the celebration. I remember being called down and didn't want to leave my seat. Fought it. Said, hey, I'm not going to the locker room. Don't want to go. We're not. No, you've got to go. You've got to go. Major League Baseball protocol. You go. <laughs> so I went. I have to go to the clubhouse to do our post-game interviews and whatnot. And I'm in there watching the ninth inning. They're stapling up the plastic on the lockers. They're wheeling in the World Series trophy. Trophies in our locker room. Biggest jinx ever. This doesn't feel right. It's like we are tempting the baseball gods here. And I remember hating that feeling. I wish I hadn't seen it. It was weird just to see that. I wish I would have never go to the bathroom on that particular evening and see that. And then sure enough, you know, you could just see it unraveling. Moises Alou led the inning off with a little broken bat single out in left center field. Alou just poked it, but it got the job done. And anytime somebody leads the inning off with a broken bat, anything, it usually doesn't turn out well. Mesa would strike out Bobby Bonilla for the first out. Then, after getting Charles Johnson to a one-two count, the Indians couldn't all get on the same page. You know, we hardly ever called pitches. In that game, I called fastball in because the two fastballs had been away. One and two to Johnson. Sometimes the money are too intelligent and call the pitch from the dugout and relays the sign to, to the catcher. I just felt like he threw a fastball in. Charles was out. And uh, Jose kept checking it off, didn't want it. If you never call the game on me, why are you going to call the game tonight? You know what I mean? Let me pitch my game. I know how to do it. Jose shook it off, and I said, you know, let him throw what he wants to throw. Threw a little slider away, that he hit a little dinker out to right field. A line drop to right that drops for a hit. Alou's on his way to third. Runners at the corners with one out. And it's like, uh-oh. This inning just got real complicated, because now they got runners on the corners. Then the next guy was a uh, Craig Counselor. He hit a fly ball to right field, tied the game. Deep drive to right. Ramirez makes the catch. Tagging is a low. Game seven of the World Series is tied. When they tied the game, it felt like we lost. It was, oh my good God, maybe it's because I grew up in Cleveland. This is eerily familiar and it stinks. And boy, you've never seen plastic come down faster. 
or trophy get wheeled out of a clubhouse quicker. Extra innings in game seven. Now it's some extra innings. Indians are running out of pitchers. Here comes Charlie Nagy in from the bullpen. I don't know when was the last time Charlie pitched in relief, you know, 100 years it felt like. Prior to tonight, Charles Nagy had made 211 big league appearances, one of them in relief. Our bullpen had been gassed. Charlie really had no business even being in there. I mean, quite frankly, it wasn't his role. The Marlins come up in the bottom of the 11th. Yeah, I came in and uh, Bobby Bo, base hit. Hit hard through the middle for a leadoff hit. And then they bunt it. Uh, I caught it, almost doubled him off at first base, didn't. Well, he is able to get back. Roller to second. Uh, OK, double play right here. Then you, you turn around, and the ball's rolling in the right field. Fernandez has it go through him. Bonilla will try for third. You know, when you got a guy in second base like Tony Fernandez, easy ground ball, and he booted it. So you know, that'll tell you, you know, everything going right for the Marley. Nothing you can do about it, you know. So then you're like, uh-oh. Then all of a sudden, you, you got first and third. Uh, then we intentionally walked the bases loaded. Devon White was up, jammed him, ground ball to second. To Fernandez, he's got to come home, and it is in time to Alamo. And then Renteria came up. So now Renteria bats with two out. Start him off with a breaking ball, kind of buckled him a little bit. And a breaking ball is in there. Came back with it, and he just kind of hit one of these knucklers at me, kind of off the end of the bat. Yeah, it was kind of slow motion. That was the slowest, the super slow-mo hit that I ever seen. The ball just going over Nagy's head. You can see the ball just barely reaching. You know, it just kind of floated. He didn't hit it all that great, but. It was hit just right. And it kind of tipped off the top of my glove. And, you know, that was a ball game right there. Yes. A liner off Nagy's glove into center field. The Florida Marlins have won the World Series. You're thinking this isn't happening. I mean, it did. The image I have in my head is Council, both arms in the air, coming across home plate. Game over. It was like a knife just went through your heart. It was the most, the most heartbreaking feel I ever had as a baseball player because we fought so hard that year to get back to the World Series and we couldn't finish it. When it's somebody shuts the lights off and it's over, that trophy's not in your locker room, it's hard. I've never seen that many tears in a locker room. These guys, it, they took it hard. This one was ours. We had it in the ninth, we blew it, it's over. That was an emotional game, I gotta tell you. I mean, I don't really look at that game much and I don't really talk about it a whole lot. I still, to this day, haven't watched that tape. Haven't watched it. I had a guy ask me one time the next year in spring training, said, how long did it take you to get over, you know, losing the seventh game of the series the way you lost it? And I said, well, just as soon as it happens, I'll, I'll let you know. I had a guy ask me about two months ago, said, how long did it take you to get over that? And I said, just as soon as it happens, I'll let you know. So you don't forget.